Hi, my name is Matthew Palm, and I'd like to introduce to you my brand new book on watercolours. This is Ready to Paint in 30 Minutes, Animals in Watercolour. This book covers everything you need to know about painting pictures of animals, from birds flying in the sky, to birds set on branches, to beautiful close-up portraits with super detail, how to do eyes, how to sketch the animals, how to paint wild animals. It is so, so versatile. 32 projects, all in super step-by-step -step detail, and of course, all painted in 30 minutes. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to welcome to the studio, the um, crammed studio. Yes, we have we have animals in the studio. Let's take a little tour of the studio. We've got we've got Polly um, over there. We've got I'm not sure that bloke's name at the back there. I'm not sure who that is either, to be fair. Um, he's definitely an animal up there, look at this. But we are surrounded by watercolour animals here today, folks. That's because over the past couple of years, um, and it has been a couple of years, I've been working on a new book uh, published by Search Press called uh, Ready to Paint Animals um, in, in 30 Minutes. And it's actually now landed in the country. Um, the books are due in like any second now. Um, so this is kind of, this is exciting, look at that, shaking. And I've got goosebumps, look at the goosebumps. I am excited folks because we are, are, are showing you um, an exclusive peek at the new book by um, this wonderful artist up here called Matthew Palmer. It's all good stuff, it's all good stuff. What I thought we'd do is we'd do a live and there's no pressure, you can start your clocks in a minute clocks in a minute yes you stop watches probably a better way to say that we're going to paint a live 30 minute blue tit okay i'm excited now yes i can smell it in the room and i've got it sketched in ready so that's not counted in my 30 minutes but when we start painting soon you can start the clock going we have this sketched in and i want to show you the sketch let me show you the sketch in case you want to have a go at this yourself because it is very much a step-by-step -step uh, demo there's the sketch folks you can take a screen grab of that you can you know you can pause the video whatever that's somebody ringing me there this is the palette of, of colors i'll talk about the brushes what i'm going to uh, be using for the demo so we've got a few colors here folks of course um and um we've not started painting yet so don't forget 30 minutes i need an official timekeeper when we start painting um, what we've got here is colours from the natural range, from the natural range, uh, which is my own sort of design of colours, if you like. And you can see that these are branded as SAA, so working very closely with the guys at the SAA to produce these colours. Special blends, you don't have to use these, of course you don't. This painting can be done just with three colours if you wanted it to be done with three colours. Um, so what we've got then is we've got some natural blue. It's a blue tit, so you need some blue. Natural blue, which is a lovely non-granulating, very soft, clean blue. Uh, works really well. Pop a little blob of that into the palette there. Uh, I've got some, some yellow. I've got a nice light yellow as well. This particular one is natural yellow light which is very similar to like Oriole and Cadmium Yellow, but it's brighter. This is a much brighter yellow. So I've got a squirt of that one. It is the light yellow that I'm using here. So just be a little bit cautious about that one uh, for me as well. Um, someone's desperate to get hold of me because the mobile's ringing as well. But luckily I turned that one off. We've got, we've got the light green here as well. Uh, natural green light, which is a beautiful uh, color designed to replicate nature. So a nice light green. Uh, dark skin tone. There's two skin tones, light and dark. I'm going to use the dark one. I've already, I've already put some of that in there. Um, and the staple colour, of course, the one that we use all the time is natural grey, which was the first colour I developed, which was quite a while ago now. 10, 12 years ago? I don't know, something like that. It's, time flies. But we have this um, uh, colour here, which is very much the shadow colour, so really important. It, it is mixed from primary colours. There's no... Um, black pigment in that so it's not like paint's great it's very much a shadow color and we've got some white now i've got natural white here but you could use opaque white or gouache or even goulash if that's what you want to do but th that's the colors ready to go 
um, sketch stain stuck to a board. The paper is a quarter imperial uh, sheet of watercolour paper. It's stuck down to a board, stuck to a board, and it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, you can see I've, I've, I've sketched it kind of central. Um, I don't need to worry too much about um, having having the animal fit in the entire sheet of paper because what I want to do here basically is I want to just paint a vignette or some people call them vinaigrettes you know where you kind of fade the edges it's a quarter imperial Matthew Palmer watercolor paper which again you can get from the SAA etc um, and it's a not surface and it's 140 pound that's expensive and it's ready to go it's ready to go so let's chuck some paint on let's talk more painting so you can start your your watches or whatever you want to do now um first of all let's just prep a few colors let's prep a few colors i want to paint in a little bit of a background very simple background here so i'm just going to get some green pale green and also we're going to grab some of the skin tone as well so i'm just going to put those those colors within the actual background here nice simple one clean brush here back to the picture and we're going to wet pretty much the entire sheet of paper here all the way through i can hear the phone ringing in the garden i literally it's 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 outside outside the studio It'll probably someone telling me my house insurance is due for renewal so what we'll do is we'll we'll cover it It's cotton paper this which means it really absorbs the water so a couple of coats is advisable but it doesn't want a huge amount of water on and then what we'll do is we'll take some of the green we'll take some of the green I've got some kitchen roll in case we start crying and then we'll bring it in um, nice pale green just kind of twisted into the background loosely avoiding the bird at this point but it's nice to get some kind of color in the back to be fair a little bit of color just creeping in around the side just don't want too much then i'll grab some of that dark skin i love that color it really really looks natural when it mixes with the green you know out of focus distant style beautiful um background color there we go so that's the simple background i'm just going to grab a size six brush at this point as well i want to get closer into this now because we know where we're working to so i'll get closer in yes it's live so there's no actual editing as such here you know what I mean don't you and we are ready to bring in that little branch at the bottom I'm just going to bring that little branch in at the bottom and actually for this I'm using a smaller brush a number six brush and a quick glance at the palette I'm going to make a little bit stronger dark skin and also some grey as well. So this will give you an idea. I mean, this bird is not in the book. This is an extra one, but it'll give you some kind of idea of what what the sort of style of work is in the book, you know. Um, I'm just going to very loosely bring this in while the paint is, or the paper is a bit damp. It's a good idea to do this. Just literally work it in. That is dark skin. I want the paint to spread. I want it to spread. So bit of a branch if you like um, and then I'm just going to weave this thing through the back here get a couple of very very distant um, out of focus branches just kind of weaving in it's nice to work outside I'm using a number six brush this one is an SAA gold brush it's a lovely pointy brush these, these are my favorite brushes the gold range I love the points on them so you can see that we're just bringing that all that in there and just literally let it just you know branch off and it's 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 wet the paint spreading perfect just what i want it to do can't go wrong with this can't possibly fail what could go wrong apart from the phone ringing nothing major Brill. okay so that's got that you can see the paint spreading liking that then what we'll do is bring some colors into the bird so down to the palette we're going to be doing um, some of the yellow of course rich strong yellow yellow is one of the few colors you can use heavy 
don't be afraid to bring that in. Um, this particular colour is um, natural yellow light, which is a nice clean uh, colour. I'm going to bring that one in pretty much uh, straight away there. It doesn't matter that the painting's damp. It's drying as I'm talking. It's drying. So we've got some of this on the back here and around the breast of the bird as well. Again, number six brush works around the collar and then nice and crisp underneath the bird. It's not all yellow, there's bits of grey in there as well, but we'll get to that. Um, this can pretty much go all the way to the back, towards those tail feathers of course. Now it does help that the painting is a little bit on the damp side here because it's kind of softening the edge, which is a good thing for this actually. And that is where I want to stop at the minute. So that's the yellow. Clean brush again. Couple of taps. And then blend it in. Or we should probably say feather it in for this probably. But we'll bring it in. We'll bring it in um, and get this thing all nicely blend in. We'll come round the round there as well. And literally just using a bit of water. This is Derbyshire water this. You can buy it in bottles, Derbyshire water, it's called Buxton. Try it, paint with it, it'll improve your painting. Almost as good as that, that, that stuff that's coming out on the 1st of April. Watercolour water. I've got the grey here, got the grey. I'm going to drop a little bit of grey in. Because there's little bits in there. Again, natural grey's got red pigment in it, it stops it going green because it, if you... If you put a grey with yellow you tend to get green but this one you won't because it's got it's got red pigment with it and that prevents any any green issues that's going to come right to the edge as well because like I say it's not just um, it's not just yellow it's got you know there's, there's grey feathers in there as well same on the back here little bits of grey coming around there it's nice to work like this because the painting is wet it's all nice and fresh we'll get clo closer into this now we can see what we're doing here beautiful um, can't go wrong and then we'll bring that in and a little bit stronger with the grey at this point so I'm just getting a stronger paint here because I want to go darker underneath the wing almost creating a shadow under there would be quite effective clean the brush I'm going to wipe the brush on some tissue a few times and then I'm just going to soften all that in blend it in if your paint is too dry to work with this colour in, just reactivate it with a bit of moisture. Check your brush, is it may or is it moist? And then we'll bring it in and we'll just basically, you know, brush it in, brush it in, work it in. The grey and the yellow um, are both what I'd call fugitive colours, so they're not, you know, strong uh, colours by any means, but they're not permanent colours, you can quite easily uh, reactivate them at any time. We're going to get that blue in very soon as well. A bit of blue on the morning. Let's come over this side. Get a bit of colour just over this back of the head here. Doesn't want a huge amount. And then again, just water and spread it. Spread it in. Get some shadow work into that. Beautiful. Can't go wrong. Let's get some blue in, folks. Down to the palette for a sec. I reckon we're about seven minutes in. We're doing all right. We're doing all right with this 30 minute watercolor. There's no pressure, you know. If it takes 31 minutes, we can get away with that. Um, we've got some blue here. This one is, is natural blue. It's just a clean, bright blue. It's very finely ground, so it, it doesn't granulate that much, which is good. Um, we've got that. We've also got some of the green as well. I mentioned natural green light at the start in the chaos of the phone ringing. We've got it here. I'm gonna bring a little bit of that in as well. We've got the gray, we'll make the gray stronger make the grey stronger and basically let's go for this let's get the blue because that's obviously one of the main colours for this let's go to the top of the head again we can get a bit closer into this we can kind of fill the screen here with the picture and there we go so if you're watching this back at a later stage yes it was all all, all filmed and broadcast live so it's all it's a nice thing doing live broadcasting, it's good. You should try it. Bring it across. Top of the head. A 
across with the blue up there. There's a hint of blue creeping around here as well. Get the water on the brush again and just gently feather all that in. That actually blends in nicely into the grey which which goes around the eye. I'll pop the eye in a little bit later on. So nice rich grey here. I'm working very strong with this this colour at this point. That goes into the beak as well. There you go. And then we'll bring that round. Don't be afraid to use the colour heavy for this. And then we've got this wonderful area that goes around the eye. Let's get close into that. Works nicely around the eye. So being a little bit careful, I am sort of holding this brush like a pencil at this point. So making it nice and nice and crisp. Again, that goes into the top of the beak, around the back of the eye. So in the book, it's all full of step by steps like this. It, it'll it'll show you the brush strokes. It'll it'll explain all the detail, and that's what Search Press do well. You know, their books are very much they're the masters in in sort of step by step uh, publications. You know, whether it's art, obviously, or, or craft as well. And of course, working with the SA, we've also produced the DVD to accompany this. So again, the link to purchase the book and the DVD, or the book on its own is in the description for this this video. I've just cleaned the brush out here and I want to soften the top of that beak down and just ever so gently tickle the edge tickle the edge just ever so gently slightly feathering it down ever so gently. We're also going to drop some grey across the top here as well. There's a little bit of grey creeps in there across the top of the head So yeah, when you do research um, blue tits or, or grey tits on the internet, just be a bit careful that no one walks in the room. Because after about 50 pages of things that aren't feathered, you'll probably find a nice picture of a, a bird, what you could have a paint at. We'll come back to the beak a little bit later, but that's a good starting point. The head, you can see it sort of taking, hopefully, taking a bit of shape. Let's bring some of that blue in. Let's bring some blue, we'll come back a little bit there. Um, we'll get the blue, natural blue is what I'm using here, remember? Not massively strong with the blue, to be fair. And the wings have a huge chunk of blue in them, so we're gonna bring that in. Bring it in down here. It also comes around there very nicely as well. Is that touch of green going to creep in here and some grey as well so stick with us. The tail feathers are very blue on, on, on blue tits and, and grey tits as well. You might have seen a demonstration I've done um, a few years ago now called a tit on a tap, that's a grey tit perched on a tap. Just throw the brush there. Um, so make sure you check that out. If it's not already. Let's bring some of that green in. There's a bit of green here. It creeps in around the back. So I'll, I'm, it's the way you work is you loosely block your colours in. I'm onto green now as well. Loosely block your colours in and then you can kind of work it all in afterwards because it's not... Watercolour is fairly easy to blend. It depends what, what paper you, uh, you're working on. If you've got a good... Um, quality paper because that makes the biggest difference if I'm honest it's the paper that makes the biggest the biggest difference so just make sure that you get a nice paper like this one this is this is just sort of branded up as Matthew Palmer paper but it's a lovely uh, cotton surface to work on make sure you check it out if you've not I know lots of you like using it on the live workshops that we teach on a weekend and things like that so um, give it a go just got a damp brush here folks and literally I'm just blending in. I'm going to get some detail in of course but at this point just water. I'm wiping the brush through tissue. Remember the moisture that we said? A damp brush is better than a, a wet brush and we're going to just blend all this in at this early stage. 
Nice. We'll come back to that once it's had a few uh, moments to dry. But I'm just going to bring in a bit of extra grey here on the edge of that wing. Just while it's damp. But we can see that the colours are starting to come. No detail yet. We're getting there. While that's kind of settling in uh, dry enough. Settling in dry enough. Uh, let's go for the uh, the claws and the a bit more work on this, this branch as well. The feet. I've done my research. I've watched Jurassic Park. So I know that the the um, birds are related to dinosaurs. So that's why you get that nice kind of, you know, thing sort of nice sort of scaly kind of detail coming in I'm gonna pop a little bit of a shadow across this log branch I don't want a huge amount of this it's not a log is it definitely not a log bring it in fade it away make it become part of the the branch there you go I'm just let it disappear. It just gives a base. I love the fact that you can keep it soft and everything. Like I say, we'll come back to the detail on the wing and stuff a little bit later and all that jazz. But I do want to put a first wash of colour on the claws and the legs. We'll get close into that. Um, quick palette check. Natural grey is what I'm using. Using it quite strong here as well. Quite dark feet on most birds, to be honest. It depends. But on your sort of domestic, you know, sort of, but any like your common garden birds like these, you know, they tend to be quite dark. Um, so yeah, working down. This is just grey I've got here. Again, number six brush will do pretty much all of this for me. They always remind me of like a silver birch tree that does a uh, a uh, bird's leg claw because it's got like almost like little rings on it, like a scaly kind of texture. So we'll just bring that into there for the minute. What we're gonna do now, folks, is get a bit of water on your brush, mold it through the tissue so you, it's it's damp. But I mean, you can see how sort of pointy the brush is there, can't you? You can see it's got that nice point on it, which means I can use it for doing very fine detail. Um, just allow the paint to spread and soften and become part of the, so you're dragging out the color and you can sit it in to the feathered area. You're looking forward to getting some detail on the top part of the bird a wee bit later. Work that in. The claw itself will start off quite dark. Um, bring it in. Try and make use of the point of the brush. If you struggle um, with the number six brush, then obviously you can, you know, you can decide if you want to use something a bit, a bit finer. They're very menacing of the claws of the uh, the birds when you look close at them. Robins have really vicious looking claws. So good job, they're friendly. Now what we'll do is we'll we'll add a couple of little rings and things to this just to give it a little bit of character. Great, and then we will come back to that. Love the shadows; that gives a nice base. I'll put some light in that because light is still to come a little bit later. Let's start to pull in some detail and it's pretty much going to be grey to start with so exactly what I've just been using always a good idea um, to get some shadows in place very dark very dark uh, working underneath the wing there because I want to get a lift to that so we'll go very dark under there and don't be afraid to use the colours quite heavy again water on the tissue now it's pretty much dry as a picture, so I can I can blend in colours quite easily. Taper all that off, and then just put some little random flicks of your brush just wherever you feel. That, that's working quite nice. Um, also, a nice dark edge coming down here, which separates the two sections of the wing. The two sections of the wing. So again, it's just using natural grey for that. Water on your brush, blend it out. Now, like I said, it's not just about birds. I mean, birds are popular. Birds are popular. There's no doubt people do love painting them on the on the virtual workshops, etc. But there's 
the book's got safari animals, wild animals, domestic. You've got cats and dogs in there as well. You've got leopards, um, lions, tigers. It really is rammed. It was the most work I think I've put, ever put into a book purely because of the amount of content that's in it. And it doesn't waffle on it. It literally gets straight to it. Which is quite surprising because I tend to waffle on a lot. But um, it doesn't waffle on too much. So just grab a copy. Grab a copy and enjoy it. Let's add a couple of little shadows to this section here. To the top. Doesn't want a huge amount there. And this is a bit of line lineage across the back here as well. A couple of little extra shadows. I'm going to bring a little bit of darkness down that edge as well. A little bit underneath. Basically just add a few darker, a few darker flicks here and there. Using water on the brush, just going to spread it out, making use of the textured paper here as well, which is good. I'm going to get that eye in because at the minute it's a bit of a zombie bird. But obviously the eye is still to come. Anticipation and all that stuff. I picked up some of the green on the brush here because it's nice green down that back edge. Bring a little bit of that in, a bit of texture. And if we pick up the grey and actually make the brush go, you can see this or not, make the brush go a little bit. Look at that, beautiful. Splay the bristles. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get close in because I want you to see this. And this is where you can either make or break the picture because if you're not careful, you can make it look a little bit too dirty so just a very light skim over even over that area just to give texture to those those feathers does that make sense so it basically adds a little bit of texture to it and it really does add quite a nice bit of interest again I want to go really dark on there beautiful let's get the eye in and do a little bit more work on the beak as well we'll get close into this Nice and strong for the grey, I'm sure you realise that. The darker the better for the eye. And what we'll do, in fact we, we can get closer than that can't we? We're professionals, we know what we're doing. We can go in and we can literally get your close up reading glasses on. I don't even wear glasses. But working around the eye almost completely outlining it if possible try and leave a thin edge don't worry too much if you can't and then what you do is you leave a bit of a light area clean that brush out and then fill in connect the the colors together so it leaves that nice highlight you can see it there and it puts just instant life into it. I love it. Right, beak wise, doesn't want a huge amount for the beaks. They're very small on, a, on these birds, so it doesn't want a huge amount. But I do want to get a bit of shadow coming down there. And then I've literally just dampened the brush again. Just going to add a little bit of extra texture, soften it in, weave it in, work it together. And anywhere I feel I want to get extra darkness, I've got the option to do that. Bring a little bit of extra grey to some of these areas. Looking like a very healthy, a very healthy looking bird. Plenty of worms gone in there, let me tell you. Is that what these these eat? I assume so. Let's bring some let's bring some lines coming back in grey. And it depends what style of artist you are as well, don't it? You know, when it comes to this sort of thing. For me, I like I like detail where it matters, you know, like in the eye and the head. But then the rest of it, you know, you can just kind of add a few, you know, random lines, which 
your mind fills in the gaps I always think with painting especially watercolors like if you're painting a cottage for example you don't paint every single brick of the cottage obviously a nice bit of darkness just comes around there back down to the claws here make sure things are nice and dark love the shadow the shadow really works well on this bit of extra texture just picking up grey, dabbing it on the tissue and weaving it around because there's quite a lot of grey feathers around there following the shape of the bird Now, what I want to do here, folks, is give this picture just a very, very quick dry because I'm going to put some highlights into this thing now um, to, to finish off, and that's going to really make quite a difference, making sure the eye is nice and dark, of course. But that's all looking good. Let's give this thing a bit of a blast with the dryer. Now, um, the dryer that I use, it's it's one of those... It's well, It looks a bit suspicious. It's got two settings on it. Um, but it's actually... Uh, it's a, a craft gun, a heat gun, because it, it's not as noisy as a normal hairdryer. That's why I use it. Well, that's drying off folks just for a few seconds and yes i've not finished that i want to bring in some lovely detail but what i'd like to do while we've got quite a lot of people watching live i'd like to show you the uh, trailer or the advert for the new book 30 seconds we'll be back hi folks my name is matthew palmer and i'd like to introduce to you my brand new dvd ready to paint in 30 minutes animals in watercolor this DVD is a versatile step-by-step -step guide with everything you need to know on painting animals. Three step-by-step -step projects. We have a beautiful elephant walking across the African safari plains. We have a portrait of a rabbit and a family of penguins marching across the Antarctic. All three projects from this film are taken from my brand new book, which accompanies the DVD, ready to paint in 30 minutes, animals in watercolor. Hi, my name is Matthew Palm and I'd like to introduce to you my brand new book on watercolours. This is Ready to Paint in 30 Minutes, Animals in Watercolour. This book covers everything you need to know about painting pictures of animals, from birds flying in the sky, to birds sat on branches, to beautiful close-up portraits with super detail, how to do eyes, how to sketch the animals, how to paint wild animals. It is so, so versatile. 32 projects all in super step-by-step -step detail and of course all painted in 30 minutes so there you go folks well it's all nice and dry now it's all nice and dry it looks like a nice healthy looking bird but what we're going to do is add a little bit of light to this now there's a, a, a few ways of putting this in you can obviously add white paint which i will do but also uh, using something like a lift out brush and this particular brush here is my own uh, lift out brush if you can get the focus to come on that there uh, it's Matthew Palmer lift art brush this one is the extra large one here it's a special brush designed for taking paint out and literally all you need is a few highlights what we've got is um, some clean dry kitchen paper just a bit of water on the brush and what I want to do is put some light in this thing it does make a difference um, quite a bit of difference actually I'm gonna bring a few little bits of light in the in the yellow now I don't really can see that, but can you see I'm 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 kind of washing colour away here, and I shall be putting some work and watercolour uh, comes off nice and easy, especially with a tool like this. Can you see how it just sort of adds it sort of cleans up areas? That's what I always think about it. It adds a bit of light and a bit of a bit of crispness to the area on that back as well. Get some light coming around there. Beautiful. 
um, even right on the edge where that dark feather meets you can see lift out again this is all explained it's all explained in the new book folks everything is there for you just just enjoy the process and just enjoy doing quick pictures you know size of the pictures um nice and small as well which means that they're quite accessible to do but obviously you can paint the pictures as large or as small as you like but yeah that, that's a good way of adding a bit of bit of detail even in those even in those those claws there as well so it all follows the shape and then let's drop down to the palette I've got a scrap piece of paper here but I'm going to use some natural white you could use opaque white or, or gouache for this or even white acrylic actually but a little bit of white there just on the scrap and the reason I put it on the scrap paper because I you want to be using white paint fresh ideally from the tube okay Um I do have a habit of forgetting that I've, I've, I've put it in the palette so I, I tend to put it on a on a scrap piece of paper just the damp brush is enough to work into the white so you get that nice crisp color just a little bit of water to get the paint flowing but not not too diluted if you dilute the color too much what happens is it just disappears when it dries so nice and thick for this there we go and I'm going to be using this brush to start with but also hanging around the side to add a bit of a clean out is a is a, a detail brush this is a branching detail brush again it's one of my own brushes for doing the nice crisp detail work I'm going to put some of that on the brush as well. So I've got a couple of brush loads of white. I've got a six and I've got something a bit finer to work on. And yeah, popping a bit of white on. Uh, lovely, lovely uh, chunk of white, white feather detail comes down here. We'll get that on. You see that, that nice white marking? This makes such a difference to these, these animals really does and don't be afraid to add little flicks of white anywhere and you'll see me use quite a bit of white in the book it's a color what i do use a lot so little little flicks i'm seeing them in concert i got dragged to a little flicks concert it's like a cheap version of little mix we'll bring that over see i've got the finer brush here now Adding, adding some of these lovely fine lines, these fine white lines that you get on the backs, the edges of the feathers. Now, obviously, if you want to do a, a, you know, a very detailed picture, you know, you can spend as much time as you like. Obviously, you know, adding, adding all the little detail. But for me, it's not about that. This, it's about. It depends what style you're into. If you're very you know, a photographic style artist, and obviously you do a little bit more detail. But for me, this is just the right amount. I want to try and do this one. It's a bit tricky, but getting right close in to the beak there. There's a very fine, you can make the white lighter in the eye if we need to as well. A very fine line that just comes in the beak there. A few extra little bits of light right in the corners of the eyes always adds a bit of interest to it you can see that that little bit of little bit of white there it just it just makes a difference keep your paint nice and thick don't be afraid to use it strong we're just about it as half an hour mark now aren't we pretty much there pretty much there And just adding a few more lines to the backs of the wings here to the tips and anywhere else we feel that I want to put some some white in down here for example let's get close in for this because it's a good one to do but in the claws in the claws the small print and um, we're gonna bring in a little bit of light in the actual claws themselves and just a few little white rings if you like you know just to give it a bit of a bit of interest bit of detail but pretty much see that bit of white in those claws just makes them look a little bit more 
interesting, don't it? Loving this, it's all taking a nice bit of shape, hopefully you agree. I'm just gonna slightly add a nice extra little bit of white on those edges of some of the wings. Just giving it an extra coat of white here and there, a few little flicks here and there, right on the edge. And of course, because it's a watercolour, because it's an animal, it's a good time to get your bird mounted. I apologise for that. We'll, we'll we'll zoom out here. We've got a mount. We've got a mount for the bird. Let's get the bird mounted. Pop this on. Can't beat a good mount in the morning. Put that on. Beautiful. Um, because it's a vignette. Because it's a vignette, it really suits a nice signature as well. So I want to sign it there i want to sign it vincent van gogh it'd be worth millions only joking don't try this at home um sign it matthew palmer if you want um and then it'll be worth nothing so you can get nice and close and you can see let's take a little close-up look at this thing folks beautiful detail love the bird love this soft out of focus vignette style background loving the detail i love that white just that little bit of white paint just adds what I'd call spit and polish to it in the eye. Bring the focal point. Hi, my name is Matthew Palm, and I'd like to introduce to you my brand new book on watercolours. This is Ready to Paint in 30 Minutes Animals in Watercolour. This book covers everything you need to know about painting pictures of animals from birds flying in the sky to birds sat on branches to beautiful close-up portraits with super detail how to do eyes how to sketch the animals how to paint wild animals it is so so versatile 32 projects all in super step-by-step -step detail and of course all painted in 30 minutes